So finally, we are here to the part that I was I was waiting to come to because here I'm going to ask questions that I went you know haywire with as a kid. Why are rainbows circular? The, the idea is rainbows. Why are they circular or semicircular? What do you see them? You look around, you see a little bow. That's how it's all drawn, and you know, in all of these fairy tales, you have a rainbow, and then what lies at the end of the rainbow? A pot of gold, right? Can you ever go and touch a rainbow and reach the end of it? Is it possible? Maybe it is. Who guards them? These little creatures called leprechauns are supposed to guard these rainbows with pots of gold at the end. Rainbows are probably the most romantic and fascinating concepts of most of what we see. Now, we can ask one more question: Which colors on the outside of a rainbow? Which colors on the inside? Is it always the same? Can there always be only one rainbow or more than one rainbows? Can you see two, three, for example? If sun is on one side, do you see the rainbow on the same side or on the other side, or both? Why is it that we see rainbows mostly during the evening or the morning and not really during noon? And what really causes us to see a rainbow? Where exactly is the rainbow? In other words, what causes us the rainbow to see it at some particular point? Is the rainbow that far away? Is it closer? Is it closer? How far away from it from us is it really? And when you and your friend are standing next to each other and you're looking at a rainbow, and both of you are saying, "Wow, that looks beautiful," are you both looking at the same rainbow, or are you each looking at your own personal rainbow? Whew. That's a large number of questions to take on our plate to try and answer, but we are going to go for it. And first step is, of course, to understand what's the simple mechanism behind how a rainbow forms. So let's try and do that. So what we shall do is let's. I want you to think of the sun because that's our source of light. And when the sun begins, the rays of the sun begin to start diverging and starts coming towards the earth. Sometimes when it's raining, what begins to happen is that the rays of those sun begin to enter the raindrop, and Some of the rays, of course, are going to enter the raindrop and start going outside. Right? Those are not really the raindrops we care about. But in some of those raindrops, the the rays of the sun that enter, what are they going to do? They are going to get bent towards the normal, as you can see right there in that diagram. If you were to approximately imagine the raindrop to be spherical or something like a prism, a little prism. So if you notice it, what do you observe is that they're going to bend towards. We'll do it as a sphere because it's easier. They're going to bend towards the normal, as you can see. But because white light from the sun has seven different colors, they're already going to get dispersed out here. Great. So the raindrop almost behaves like a prism. But if the angle is quite high, what's going to happen? They are not going to leave the raindrop, but rather get totally internal reflected. They're going to get in- reflected internally because that angle where this ray is going to leave from a denser medium to a rarer medium, it so happens that if the angle becomes more than a point, all the rays get reflected internally. We saw this in the previous chapter. It's called total internal reflection. So if that happens once, and now the angle is not too large, what happens? At this point, they start leaving from the denser medium called water into air, and they come outside. So by now, they've been dispersed quite a lot. Now the rays of the sun, which were supposed to be going that way, have been deviated down here. Thereby, if there's a person standing out there looking up very curiously, what will he see? A set of colors coming towards him. Now clearly, you know that the red light is going to get deviated the least, and The blue, the most over there, and thereby when it comes, gets reflected again. It's all going to get inverted, right? So red light comes there, begins to get reflected, and then another refraction. So it put it in very scientific terms. What do you have? One refraction, one total internal reflection, and another refraction. It comes out down there, and it begins to see a rainbow that's going to be projected somewhere out there. Who? But this is a one type of a rainbow called a primary rainbow. Because it has only, or a first order rainbow, because the number of total internal reflections is one. Now, if we were to make it so that the ray is entering in such a large angle that it gets reflected once, gets reflected once more. So let's take a diagram for that. So keeping this aside, if you were to think of sunlight entering a raindrop, but in this case it gets refracted, then it gets reflected once, gets reflected once more, and then comes outside. What would you observe? That's right. You would see a rainbow in a slightly larger plane, and because it's got reflected twice, the rays are going to start diverging even more. Which means this rainbow will be wider than the first order rainbow, and this is called a second order rainbow because it has two reflections inside. And you can see clearly that this will form at a different angle as well because the raindrops that cause such a reflection are going to be different from the raindrops that cause the first kind of reflection. Interesting, right? So now, so you have two kinds of rainbows that people can see, both because of a very simple mechanism. Now the question really is. Why are rainbows semicircular? First of all, are they semicircular? Well, the truth is they're not. They're actually circular. If you've been fortunate enough to be able to see a rainbow from the sky in an aeroplane, you would be able to see that they're fully circular. So why aren't we able to do that out here on the on the ground? 
simply because half the rainbow gets obstructed by the earth so the rainbow is forming the remaining part of the rainbow would have formed below the earth but we can't see it the horizon comes somewhere on the way or maybe even that the raindrops are not completely there now one question answered so what's the shape of a rainbow it's a circle second question what is it how far away is the rainbow now look at this there is a particular angle at which sunlight should enter those raindrops for us to be able to see either a first order or a second order so let's take first order for example so there exists a particular angle at which the raindrops should be from us for us to be able to see a rainbow through them so there exists raindrops that are suitable for a rainbow now clearly any raindrop along the angle will create a rainbow for us but how many such raindrops exist if world was 2d if it was flat land only one but the world is three dimensional so if i was to take that and circle it around what would you get a complete cone so every raindrop along that cone has or contributes to a rainbow so it's pretty much like this if you're standing out there a cone of raindrops away from you each of each of those raindrops on that cone are creating a rainbow for you brilliant right so where exactly is the rainbow is it far away is it close by it's everywhere everywhere between you and the rainbow is the rainbow at that cone so clearly if it's a second order rainbow you have a larger cone and a rainbow forms outside of it in a more divergent manner so we've answered a few of these questions there are many more we haven't yet answered but you can think about them be curious and go and find out even more about rainbows it's a pretty simple mechanism with magnificent effects